So, has a piece of media ever made you cry? Maybe a piece of art really spoke to you? Beautiful. Maybe it was the song lyrics that made you shed a tear. For me? Glad you asked. Today, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite My Little Pony episodes so far. Notice I say so far since season 9 is right around the corner. So, what episode is it that made me cry? I'm talking about season 7's The Perfect Pair. An episode which starts rather simply. We get Apple Bloom walking through the market, suddenly a stand that is really buzzing catches her attention and she waltzes over to see what it is. And it's a good thing it was her and not Applejack cause otherwise she would burn down the stand on sight because it's a pear stand. Apple Bloom gets fed a biscuit with some good old Apple Family Betrayal spread on it and introduces herself. Stand Pony also introduces himself as Grand Pear. Thankfully we get some exposition thanks to this pony standing next to Apple Bloom who promptly says that Grand Pear isn't new to Ponyville but in fact he had just moved back from Van Hoover where apparently his stuff was really famous and therefore Equestria I assume. But with every Apple family member treating every other fruit besides oranges cause they're family with them and vegetables cause I don't know why as heresy uh, it doesn't surprise me that Apple Bloom doesn't know who the pear is. Anyway, Grand Pear gives her a jar of pear jam so Apple Bloom can go home only to get Bart bearing the apple name and exiled. Thanks, Grand Pear. Anyway, the Apple Kids, that's what I call them, the Apple Kids realize that the pear family feud makes absolutely no sense since Granny Smith can't be fucked with to explain, so they venture off to meet the family's historian, Goldie Delicious. They ask about the feud, Goldie hesitates, cue flashback, numero uno. We get a lovely little diss war between Grand Perry and young Granny Smith, and while reading to a tree is already a reason to worry about someone's well-being, covering a tree with a blanket has to be in some way harming the actual fruit. And in typical fashion when it comes to family feuds, there seems to be a counterpart to each member, including these two pumpkin and pound cake looking babies. On the apple side we got Bright Mac, and on the pear side we got pear butter. Bright Mac is all like my mama says that if you put a buttercup up in your shin, it'll make you glow. He has it to pear butter and it glows, what do you know? Causing little Bright Mac to instantly fall in love with her and nicknaming her Buttercup. Applejack quickly interjects and says that her mom's name wasn't pear butter, which surprise number one, those two were their parents and surprise number two, they're half pear. So yeah, this episode finally gave us the fans something we were wanting for a good while. But hold on folks, or this may be My Little Pony, the outcome will surprise you. Consider this your spoiler warning. So after finding out the truth about their mom and the beginning of the pear apple feud, they go off to talk with Burnt Oak, Bright Mac's best friend. And let me just say, this pony's design and voice is just the best cow pony I've ever seen this side of the Rio Grande. So he assumes they aren't there for firewood and deducts they're there to learn about their dad. Cue flashback number two. We get a little introduction of them racing to see who could till the land the fastest before Bright Mac gets distracted by the um, the plot of this episode and he crashes into the small water silo that contained the whole Pacific Ocean. Bert Oak gets Bright Mac out of there before Grand Pear can come and see it was him. Therefore, meaning Pear Butter would get the blame. Thankfully, love is a thing that makes us do even dumber things. Bright Mac goes to clear things up and tell Grand Pear that it was in fact him who destroyed the silo. Buttercup giggles and Grand Pear takes her away for Dairy to giggle at that apple boy. Bert Oak tells us that after that, Bright Mac would go over and work on the water silo every day on his breaks, which of course he didn't mind because you know, buttercup, duh. Anyway, that's all for Bert Oak. He sends him on their way to see Mrs. Cake, who was their mom's best friend, apparently. Just as they take off, Big Mac quickly returns to ask Bert Oak if it'd be okay if they could come back sometime to hear more stories about their dad. With a tear in his eye, Bert Oak agrees and Big Mac happily runs off. This is the first place I cried during this episode. The fact that it was Big Mac who went back to ask just gave it that extra oomph to me. Seeing Bird Oak shed a tear and that big old smile on Big Mac, ah, oh, that's the definition of wholesome right there, I tell you. So, we get to Mrs. Cake. Well, cinnamon sugar on toast, all three apple siblings. And holy hearts warming Yule Log, they gave Mrs. Cake dialogue. So, she brings up the fact that she never knew when to bring up their parents because 
she never knew the right time, which is just complete bullshit if you ask me. What do you mean you never knew when to bring it up? You've known these ponies all their lives, but never told them you were their mom's BFF? Like, what the fuck? Flashback numero tres. So, thanks to Buttercup over here, Chiffon Swirl, aka Mrs. Cake, aka the fucking devil, learned how to bake. And one day, after perfecting a recipe or something, she decided to surprise Pear Butter only to stumble on Pear and Mac having a little picnic date. Bright Mac sneezes on Pear Butter and she just laughs it off. Who knew all you had to do to get a girl to laugh was to cover her with snot. Anyway, Chiffon breaks the twig, gets their attention, and Pear Butter makes Chiffon promise not to tell. Sadly, life has to laugh, and Granny Smith shows up, takes Bright Mac away, all while insulting Pear Butter. Mrs. Cake also gives us our fifth flashback, or story in this case. It's a story about them celebrating, in Bright Mac's words, their 131,456th hour anniversary. Y'all may be surprised to hear that this is the anniversary of Bright Mac calling Pear Butter Buttercup. Y'all may be also surprised that for this script, I actually remember that number off my head and then have to go back to check it on the episode. We get what is also one of my all-time favorite My Little Pony songs and moment number two of When I Cried. So what's so perfect about this song? For me, it was the fact that it was a country song, Buttercup singing, the moment of them dancing with each other across the street, how she ends the song with saying she's falling in love, and they both blush. It was a really good moment and it made me very much cry like a little baby. After this, we have grandparents say they're moving, gasp, commercial break, so, why they moving to Van Hoover? Land, warehouses, and to be honest, because of those gosh darn apples. Grandpa's words, not mine. So, poor heartbroken Pear Butter did what she had to do. She tells Bright Mac that sadly she has to stay with her family because love ain't worth smack. But, Bright Mac did something about it. What, you may ask? Well, off to Mayor Mare we go. Who isn't that surprisingly enough? So, we get to Mayor Mare and she says some stuff. Bright Mac leads Pear Butter to the edge of Apple Acres, where he is so sure that he can make things work that he's willing to put a ring on it. It being Buttercup, of course. They say their vows, plant seeds, but life is a bitch and Grandpa and Granny Smith both show up and ask what the hell is going on. They explain, get married, finally kiss, thanks Alessia, but Grandpa is all like, we gotta go, Pear Butter, cause family, and Buttercup is all like, but the apples are my family. And Grandpa hits her with the, are you choosing apples over your family? And crying sesh number three, boys, with tears in her eyes. Poor old Buttercup is all like, you're making me shoes? Grandpa angrily says yes, but Pear Butter decides to stay with the apples. Granny has a change of heart, apparently, and comforts her while Grandpa storms off. Applejack gets mad and decides it's time to confront their grandparents, so they go to Grandpa first. And oh boy, at this point I was in shambles that all these final scenes had me breaking down in tears by the second. So we get them introducing themselves, but Applejack adds a but you already knew that when telling Grandpa, and that face of regret, oh my god, just... <clears throat> it doesn't help that Apple Bloom straight up says, so are you here to say that you're sorry and that you want to get to know us better? God damn it, Apple Bloom, stop making me cry. I'm so sorry. I, I, I was just so angry. God damn it, Grandpa, you too. Anyway, they go to confront Granny Smith next, and well... Yeah, I can't believe I let a silly feud keep me from my family. Nothing's keeping you from us now. Let's not miss anything else. Applejack's right. Welcome back, prickly old pear. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you old crab apple. <laughs> <coughs> they make peace, Apple Bloom mentions their parents left them something to remember them by, and we get this amazing scene. The episode ends with all of them hugging while admiring this beautiful tree their parents left behind. The end. So now that that episode left me broken hearted but happy, let's go to why I actually enjoyed it so much. So to begin with, it's an Applejack Apple Family episode, it's already a given that I'm gonna like it. And while we sadly have confirmation that their parents are in fact dead, I'm glad they actually gave us an episode about them to begin with. At this point, I was pretty sure we were never going to get them in the show outside of being mentioned every now and then by Applejack, Applebloom, or Big Mac. 
And personally, I think they made the parents mighty justice. With this being a season 7 episode, I was kinda hoping that Big Mac asking Burnt Oak if they could come back sometime for more stories, that they would have made something in season 8. And I was really hoping since I was actually on a My Little Pony marathon of watching season 6, 7, and 8 when I saw this episode. But hey, season 9 is around the corner and who knows? We could get lucky and get another pear butter and Brian Mac episode. Maybe one where, you know, they're remembering their fondest memories, but Apple Bloom is sad because she doesn't have a special one. With her maybe being too young at the time of their parents passing, all the apples do their best to comfort her, but at the last second, something jogs her memory and she recalls the last time she saw them, and well, let's just say I'm already crying just thinking of that. Also that last scene with Granny Smith and Grandpa, in awe seeing the tree, it's very poetic since in a way, they're seeing their son and daughter again. It was just an overall wholesome good episode with amazing characters, an incredible song, William Shatner's incredible voice acting, and the story. I definitely recommend this episode, and season 7 in general. One of the best seasons and one of the best episodes overall in my opinion. Thanks for watching! Hopefully you liked this video, I know it's a different type of video from what you're used to on this channel. But let me know what you think, I will be covering more episodes in this format, so stay tuned if you did enjoy them.